69. You know, we're about to embark on a journey into logic, common sense, and the discernment of both. You know, I have a big problem <clears throat> with people in whom the word hypocrisy permeates their very beings, but the word itself is not found in their personal lexicon, their own brain's dictionary. You know these people? I do. They're everywhere. People like these walk around dead, living their lives completely meaningless and devoid of reason and logic. Let's, uh, let's first cover the idea or the notion that is promulgated by these people. And by the way, every example that I'm going to give in this presentation covers the same exact people, no matter, no matter what that example is. Let's first start with the notion of diversity. You know this perverted notion of diversity? And it's illogical, meaning diversity for but any of its actual definition is completely lost by these people who push the idea, the notion, such as like diverse ideas. These people aren't interested in that. The word diversity is only concerned with the color of skin with these people. Keep in mind that on the other hand, these same people push the notion and the concept of one human race. Can you explain to me how one person can live their lives walking around as total hypocrites? How does one embrace two totally opposing ideologies? Because I embrace the individualness of people of course, without having to be told to do so by the system itself, which these people have succumbed to, which is why they do walk around dead and totally devoid of any cognition. Because how do you embrace the diversity and the individualness of an individual if you also espouse the notion that everyone is the same and belongs to one world race. These so-called liberals that hold these opposing beliefs they're not liberals. They are totally uh, devoid of uh, the entire concept of liberalism. 
classical liberalism, that is. The old French, uh, French term, laissez-faire, liberalism, which means literally to let it be, to thusly leave us alone, is not embraced by their ideology that just so happens to have the same name. This should be clue number one for people listening to this. These so-called liberals are only concerned with helping to catalyze the system's desire, agenda, at destroying anything and everything that is pure, wholesome, and good in order to effectively create this disgusting notion of a one world, a new world, a new order, a new government, and a new system under that order, a new system of rule under that order. Massachusetts has a new law in its books <clears throat> this law uh, deals with people swearing in public. Now, this is total color of law legislation. And most people that hear about laws like these, they assume, rightfully so, that the law itself is only intent on generating revenue for said state and local governments by imposing fines, and that's it. <clears throat> now, if you engage in conversation with somebody about this law or similar laws, they will tend to defend it even if they personally do not. Have you run into this? Those of you listening, let, let me give you an, uh, let me let me expand on this. People will more more often than not. Accept stuff like this, laws like this, as being anything legitimate. But if you were to engage in a conversation with somebody about it, they will be scared that they might offend you because they don't know what your position is, so they automatically switch to going to the status quo of defending the law somehow in some capacity. This is the fucked up nature of our society. This can also be said with the TSA. Everyone knows that the TSA has time and time again, in its short existence, has overstepped its boundaries, To the point where everybody who were to hear about some of the disgusting acts promulgated by TSA agents, that again, if you engage in a conversation with somebody about the TSA themselves, they will generally defend it. You will hear the same bullshit a rhetorical response that I hear day in and day out, it's always the same from people who are scared to actually voice their opinions. And what you will hear is, we have to surrender certain rights and liberties in order to be safe. 
and I, I can't understand how somebody could espouse that nonsense when Benjamin Franklin addressed that exact concept exactly down to a T. He addressed it. He said, and I quote, those who would give up essential liberties and freedoms for temporary, uh, temporary, temporary, temporary uh, security, those who would uh, give up certain freedoms for temporary security deserve neither. People are so scared of offending somebody. And the irony here is that that law in Massachusetts, the swearing in public piece of legislation, that color of law that it is, deals with the very notion of political correctedness, which is in and of itself a sham. It is a sham. It's something meant to sound reasonable to you so that you give in to it. It's bullshit. So-called liberals. The hypocrisy of people. Ordo liberalism. O R D O. Ordo liberalism. I, I want to explain to everybody in this video the, the only intent I have in this uh, presentation here that I'm doing is to get people to realize that there is only one problem and one problem wrong with society. No matter how many different facets and different problems you think there are, there is only one. And that problem is socialism. There is no such thing as right-wing extremism at all. It's all left-wing socialists and socialism. Ordo liberalism. This is a German variant of neoliberalism, which is New Age liberalism. We just talked about it. It is, it is distant from classical liberalism. The actual founding concept of constitutional liberty. Ordo liberalism is a German variant of neoliberalism that emphasizes the need for the state to ensure that the free market produces results close to its theoretical potential. That would be impossible since there has never existed a nation on this planet that has been completely and totally free market capitalism. And every liberal in this country espouses ideas similar to this, that the government needs to impose itself on the corporations that the same people who claim that the banks are the ones running everything. The state should form an economic order instead of directing economic processes. That's great. What's the difference between guiding a hand forcefully or just imposing your will? The three, negat the three examples of auto-liberalism are all negative. And they use the three examples to back their theories. The three examples of a philosophy wherein the state oversees, and the perfect example is when Barack Obama 
came into office claiming that it was all Bush's fault when he is in every avenue and in every facet of responsibility as Bush. The government bought up General Motors under Obama as Bush also bailed out the banks. This is government intervention in free market, quote unquote. <laughs> this is not free market. Capitalism. The three examples are Nazism, Nazi Germany, Russian Socialism, and Keynesianism. Wherein, by the way, Keynesian economics is espoused and supported and embraced by Ron Paul. These are the people in the United States, the same people that espouse hypocritical notions and ideas of diversity and one human race. And let's go one step further. Look up neo-Nazi. Look up Nazi. Look up the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. Wikipedia, doesn't matter where you go. Each of these groups are touted as right-wing. It is demonstrably provable, yet again. Every facet of this society that you have a problem with stems from socialism, is socialism in all of its forms. Neo-Nazi. These are people that are put into the right-wing camp where the largest group of people within the right-wing camp are Christians. Neo-Nazis hate Jesus Christ. They think of him as yet another Jew. They hate Jews. They come up with all sorts of derogatory names to describe Jesus, such as Jesus. And yet because you people will sometimes see, either in person, in the media, a neo-Nazi has a cross tattooed on him or her. The old German iron cross that has absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. The same can be said about the KKK. They burn life-sized crucifixes. Is that right-wing? Is that Christian radicalism? Again, the largest group in the right-wing camp? Sounds more like anarchy and atheism to me. Again, where atheism and anarchy are also left-wing. Gangbangers. Gangbangers on the streets that wear gigantic crucifixes, sometimes made of solid gold. They'll have effigies of the Virgin Mary and Jesus tattooed all over their bodies go around and kill, shoot, maim, and murder people. That's Christian? I don't think so. Anarchy. Here's a wonderful <laughs> philosophy here. <clears throat> Anarchy. Anarchy's entire foundation relies on a notion of no order and no laws. These are people that will firebomb 
buildings with Molotov cocktails and destroy cars and uh, what have you. What do you think is the result of such actions? The setting up of more order and more laws. Curfews, imposing higher fines, taking it out on all of us because we can't discriminate, and all sorts of color of law legislation that has extremely vague literature and composition within it. The same is said about these street gang bangers because the system of local governments would be absolutely nowhere without gang bangers. It is a beautiful, beautiful relationship between gang bangers and the state. They achieve the same nonsensical, opposing, ideological end that anarchists do. Every time a gangbanger shoots up a neighborhood or kills somebody, again, the end result is more laws, however draconian they are, by, again, the same said socialists who are in office. You can take Chicago, for example. What do you think Rahm Emanuel is? Are you starting to realize that this is all one basis, one, one ideology, one notion that has broken itself up into different facets in order to keep society under control? It's all socialism. That's all it is. Now, I would like to talk for a moment about uh, the militias. Militias in this country, which are mostly Christian, okay, real Christians, belong to these groups. <clears throat> Christians are the number one most persecuted group in this country. And should it be any surprise to any of you that that not be the case when the society that you live in is one of <laughs> New Age, Zeitgeist, Humanist, where its entire foundation and dogma lies in Luciferianism. They are the only threat to the system, Christian militias. That's the point to all of this. Now, each and every case that you will ever hear about a militia that uh, tried to cause some sort of violence in this country, I will have you keep in mind that, uh, uh, backpedaling a bit, going back uh, just a bit, Homeland Security and, uh, and certain other federal institutions regard militias as homegrown terrorists. When in each and every case, no matter which militia it is, in no matter what state, <laughs> that group had already been infiltrated by cops. And the perfect example of this is the most recent Hutteri militia in Michigan. The only members of that militia that were trying to rabble-rouse the group into violence and, and, and uh, you know, causing 
all, all, all forms, all sorts of uh, violence and damage to whatever from cops. There are always cops infiltrating these groups. Just a little over a month ago, a judge dismissed all charges against the Huttery. Probably because it got too public and people figured it out. It never ceases to amaze me that, you know, real people, real people, people like me that pay attention to what's going on are, are labeled, you know, crazy, quote-unquote, whatever. <laughs> you know, when really all it is is that it's different. It, uh, I elected to pull myself out of the line of all the other sheep being shepherded. <laughs> um, <coughs> and, <coughs> you know, It's just, it's, it's just, it's funny to me. I mean, it's you people that suffer from normal C bias, cognitive dissonant, dissonance, you know, Stockholm syndrome, projectionism, and <laughs> you know, I mean, what in the fuck? This whole idea of, of um, making the Christians look bad, that is not a mistake. These atheistic socialists, that it was their only goal was to destroy Christianity. That's why putting neo-Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan in the same quote-unquote camp as the right wing, putting them all in the same wing, that creates a guilt by association. Just like the same dirty fucking tactics of anarchists and gangbangers create for the system the Hegelian dialectic, the problem-reaction-solution. Pressure from above and pressure from below. And these people have gotten a lot of you out there who are really trying to figure out what's going on, spinning around in circles because you don't know what's going on. I mean, you people out there that espouse that I mean, I can't believe how hypocritical nearly everyone in this country is. Total cognitive dissonance when you hold one belief and you espouse another. Like that diversity versus that garbage concept of human race. Diversity indeed. <laughs> I used to be all for defending people who were at least on a rudimentary level concerned about the welfare of their children in making sure that their children's upbringing was something conducive to what they'd want. But when you're concerned about your work and the affairs that you have on your spouses, 
and everything else in your fucking lives and you push off your children onto the state and you elected to do so, teach your children about diversity like they're teachers in the public school system that teaches diversity all while teaching conformity with a poster of Barack Obama on the wall. You people deserve nothing less than having your children ripped from your embrace. But for the fact that you physically gave birth to them, you do not deserve them. You people <laughs> elected for change and got nothing for it. You don't want real change. You can't e even identify what's wrong with your society. So who are you to go out and vote for the lesser of two evils, as I heard it and am sick of hearing about it. Barack Obama expecting change and you people got nothing but business as usual. When each and every fucking time I bring up the similarities of either party and either politician running for either wing, it doesn't fucking matter, I get the same stupid, rhetorical, sheepish fucking response. Which is, if you don't vote, you don't have a say and have no room to complain. Again, this is more illogical arguments coming from illegitimate assholes. I do not vote because it isn't worth a damn. And because I do not vote, I have every room and leeway to say what the fuck I want to when you voted for the asshole who will ultimately end up in office. That ends up fucking everything up. How does it feel being just illogical hypocrites? Totally fucked up in the head, devoid of any moral compass. And again, it goes back to that New Age concept that on all levels of authority, by all levels of authority, in all positions of any influence, whether that be authoritative, governmental, Hollywood, mass media, where the only problem, the only problem is that you've got a system, an economic order, And it's all rooted in this concept of New Age, Zeitgeist, which is German for New Age, humanistic, transhumanism, New Age, uh, 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 one world ideology. The only embrace comes from the illumination of ideas. Those ideas never, ever benefit you. Believe me. What is the point in the pushing of knowledge and, and the strive for knowledge when you people don't even know what the fuck's going on around you? Your textbook, assholes. And that is, a, that is an apt... It, it, 
That's apt. Textbook. That's literal. Because that's the only knowledge you have. It's textbook. And it's all rooted in Luciferianism. The problem is, is because the system you live under is devoid of God. Because people think they can govern people. You haven't been able to do that yet. And we're not going to. We go back to morals, ethics, something. Something's got to give. Uh, because, you know, uh, <laughs> you think there's going to be any change whatsoever between Obama or Romney, and it doesn't matter who represents. I will not vote for big-eared, smiley face, suit, oligarch, Wall Street, asshole Obama, and I will not vote for checkered pants, country club, uh, Republican socialist Mitt Romney. Um, you need to kind of, I mean, this is like, this is like a society of people wondering if there's a difference between themselves and the person they see in the mirror. There's no difference. None. 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 None at all between these two people. Real change has to be embraced. And real change means something on the order of magnitude that really impacts your lives. And I'm so sorry that uh, the disruption of your jobs and your soccer time, your so you soccer moms and all of that garbage, uh, it has to be something on that order. Otherwise, stop voting because all you're doing is lying to yourselves. You got nothing in the last election. And you're not going to get anything in this one. Even if Ron Paul ended up being the candidate up against Obama. You have to really sacrifice things in your lives. And I'm not talking about sacrificing an hour of work time so that you can go vote for fake change. That's not sacrifice. <laughs> It's business as usual on your end, as so too will you get business as usual on their end. It's time to wake the fuck up, people.
June 14th, 2012, Thursday.